What's up, everybody? It is your boy, Brennan, and I'm glad you guys are back here. I know I haven't been on in a while, but I've been taking care of some business, trying to get the website up and running. Thank you guys again for everybody who has been supporting the website. If you haven't been to the website, man, go check it out, man. We're doing some amazing things on that website. That, again, is www.brandoncolephotos.com. We got so many great things planned for you guys, and I can't wait for you guys to be alone for the journey for 2022. Now, we're going to dive right into it, guys. Today, we are talking about ND filters. Everybody should have ND filters. If you don't know what an ND filter is, I am going to help you with that today really quick in this video because I think this is some amazing, amazing information. I wish there was this information when I first got into photography. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have had a bunch of blown out images um, like some of us do. So, without further ado, we're going to jump right into today's video. Today's video is helped out and sponsored by Case Filters. Now, Case sent me out a uh, example test kit of their ND filters. Now, as you guys know, these are clip-in ND filters. I've been using these for so long now. I, I, I absolutely love them. So, first of all, big shout out to Case for sending me the filters. They did not get to see this video before I posted, nor do they have any say so in my opinion about these filters. So. These are clip-in ND filters. Now, you might be asking, what is a clip-in ND filter? Well, unlike the traditional ND filters that probably all of you guys have, which kind of probably looks like this. ND filters go on the front of your lens, all right? And this is used to help block the amount of light that enters your lens and hits your centers, sensors. This is mainly used on bright sunny days to keep you underexposed so either eye you can use flash or just stop those really really harsh sun rays from coming in and hitting your model. And that's why we use ND filters to stay under, to stay properly exposed so we can still get some amazing shots. ND filters are extremely, extremely important for people who do a lot of photography where you are trying to capture slow motion and or whether you, where you are trying to capture long exposure photography. This is extremely important in long exposure photography because you're gonna slow that shutter speed all the way down to like 1 30th of a second or whatever your case may be. But when you're slowing down that shutter so slow, that means when, that, when you press that shutter button, that shutter is opening for that amount of time and you're letting in a ton of light while that shutter is open. And then when that shutter closes, you got all that light in there and you have to find a way to kind of diminish it to really still get good exposed shots. That's why a lot of people who use, um, who, who do long exposure, use really, really high ND filters to cut a really, really big amount of light from coming in and hitting that sensor so you can get some really nice long exposed shots. So today, we have this assembly from Case. Now with this, this is a really amazing set because with this you get four different types of clip-in filters. Now the first clip-in that you get with this is a UV clip-in filter for ultraviolet rays. Um, you also get a ND8 filter. You get a ND, ooh, I can't see it, a 64. And I think the last one that you get is a ND1000 uh, filter. Now, if you don't know how ND8, 6, 4, 12 translates um, into how many stops of light it actually reduces. I'll try to break it down for you in just a little bit. So when you're dealing with exposure values, the way the table reads is for every stop of light, it translates to about point. 0.3 optical density, all right? That means for every 0.3 is a stop of light. So if I am shooting with a ND filter um, and you see like a ND2, that means that is one stop of light, 0.3 optical density. 0.3 is one stop of light. 0.6, two stops. 0.9, three stops. 1.2, there you go. You got it? 
All right, so um, now with that, um, you're also going to say like your ND filters um, for one stop because ND2, ND4, ND, you know, eight, all of that is doing is having, it's basically cutting about half the amount of light that is coming into your system with every, with every stop or with every ND filter, you're basically having that amount of light. So for example, if I have a one stop ND filter, I'm going to, the, on here is probably going to say ND2 because it's having the amount of light. And then every, what you're doing is you're adding every half to get that. So ND2 is then multiplied by itself. ND4, which is a two stop. ND8, because four plus four is eight. That would be the next one, which is a three stop. Eight plus eight is 16. So ND16, just four stops of light. 16 times two. There you go, ND32, five stops of light. 32 times 2, ND64, 6 stops of light, and on and on and on, and you got it. So definitely, definitely check this out. I'm going to make sure I put the link in the comment section below um, about this case and about this um, setup that you get from case. It is amazing. Now, also in the case that you get with this ND filter setup, you do get the uh, setup. You get the gaskets, and you also get this little thumb, what these little thumble thimble thing this is basically to help you put the ND filter on your sensor um, and then and also take the ND filter off now here I have my Sony a1 now I will tell you that these ND filters have I have been able to use these with each camera that I have so my a7 IV, my a1 my a7 R4 so what you would do is you would take out your ND filter all right there are these little silver prongs right here at the top and this is basically to be under so that way when you put it in there um, it'll press down on it and it'll slide in perfectly and then when you're ready to take it out you would use this little thumbnail this little thumb thingy it's almost like I'm playing a guitar um, you would use this little thing to basically pop it out so I'll show you how it is alright and you can see kinda where the groove is in the Sony A1 alright See that little thing right there? So that is how that part of the ND filter, all right, the little rounded section right there, is going to go in there. So it's really, really easy. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to take it and make sure you watch your fingers. You know, you don't want to get fingerprints and all everything on here. So just make sure you're doing this right. All right, so we're going to, so you're going to take this and put on, a, see if I can see it on the camera here. You're going to line up the grooves, all right. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and use your little thumb thing to help you line up everything. I'm trying to do this while I'm lining everything up on the camera. All right, there we go. So, I don't know if you can see that, there you go. So you wanna make sure it's put in there, and then when you have it set, you can push down on it. All right, so, so again, make sure you get it back up in there, all right? You can't be scared of it, all right? And then when you get it up in there, just make sure you press it down in there, and voila, there you go. So let me see if I can turn it, see if we can see it a little bit, all right? Bam. All right, so there you go. Now you have, now you got your ND filter, clip-in filter, and then you can take your lens, it's on your lens, all right? And it goes on there like this. And now I have an ND filter right on here and I don't have to deal with filter thread. So that's basically how the uh, clip-in filter works. And then when you're ready to take it out, you just take your little thumb thing right here. And again, you want to be careful. Okay, there you go. And it just comes right out. You know, apply a little pressure. And um, basically, it comes right out. So, no worries with that. Now, let's talk about um, the ND filter versus some of the traditional ND filters. So, here we have some traditional ND fil filters and you have the uh, clip-in filters. Now, these do have pros and cons, all right? I found at times that I would rather prefer the traditional ND filters, and there's a lot of times I prefer the clip-in filters. Now, let's go over just some obvious things. Why would you prefer the traditional ND filter over clip-in filters? Well, with the traditional ND filter when I'm just ready to put it on there it goes on 
and it comes off. All right. Whenever you try to take it off, take it off, take it off, on and off, on and off. Um, that's it's ease of use. It's easier to get to. Um, it's a little bit safer, if you will. You know, case maybe. I mean, it's it's the obvious stuff. Another diff another obvious thing about the traditional is that you can have a variable ND filters. When I'm doing video, this is a variable ND filter. So this turns to whatever ND setting that I want to. So if I need to let in less light or more light, I can change the variable ND filter. You really don't have that option with a clip-in filter. So you have to make sure and be cognizant about that if you're using a ND filter inside, especially if you're outside and you're on video and the, the weather is changing and the sun is dipping up and down. You gotta be cognizant about that. You might wanna use a traditional ND filter for that. That is, Those are the biggest differences between having a, uh, a traditional ND filter and having a clip-in ND filter. Now, let's talk about some of the benefits of having a clip-in filter. I have probably 20 different lenses, all right? I'm just gonna do this and you'll get it. The 105, some other camera, some other camera, some other filter thread, some other filter thread. I think you get where I'm going with this. For all those lenses back there, you have to have a ND filter for different filter threads. It just gets annoying and I'm sitting here thinking, okay, which one is a 67? Which one is a 72? Which one, you know, I'm going through all these filter threads, but guess what? One size fits all. With a clip-in ND filter, and I think this basically just wins it all. With the clip-in ND filter, I can have a filter on every lens that I have. Every last one. I don't have to worry about finding one for my big old 105, my 135, my 85, my 32, my 64, my whatever the case, my 50. I don't have to worry about that. I can just put a clip-in filter in here in my, in my photography camera and just shoot. You know, if I wanna, if it's really bright outside, use a 64, use a, a, a 32. We use a one stop, two stop, three stop. It really just depends. Put it in, and I don't ever. I can just change lenses, and don't have to worry about it. Another thing that sets aside the clip-in filter from a traditional filter: debris, dirt, like a lot of different things. Like when you're shooting, you know, and you get you know, sometimes you get fingerprints on your your traditional ND filter. You might get some dirt, sand, everything like that on here and then you gotta wipe it off and all this stuff and you might leave some smudges and stuff you know with a clip in ND filter I mean, you don't have those options yeah it might just it might get on the lens yeah it might get on the lens versus the actual ND filter but a lens you know put a lens hood on it you know it's you can there's things to, in order to stop and alleviate it from getting on the lens but I don't have to worry about it getting on the ND filter and it's right on top of the sensor so you know that to me is really that that that's the biggest factor in it. Um, I've been using Case for a lot uh, for a long time. Um, I love their prices. They are they are amazing. It doesn't um, diminish your image quality. Um, I will put their information in the comment section below. Um, here is the link to Amazon. You go get you some clip in ND filters, man. I promise you, they are the absolute amazing. I get so many questions about, hey, which ones did I get and which ones are you using? Well, these are the ones that I'm using. I'm using the Case clip in camera filters all right again i hope you guys enjoyed this make sure you guys comment like and subscribe make sure you check the links in the comment section to the case set i'll have the case set and i might even put some individuals um individual ones in there um but go check them out man they are absolutely amazing so i hope i answered all your questions about indie filters if not hit me up on my instagram or send me a message in youtube and i'll make sure i can try it i will try my best to get back with you about indie filters so until next time guys we out